Imagine waking up on your second day without food and realizing your body is still burning energy even though nothing is coming in. Your metabolism doesn't shut down when food disappears, it ramps up stress hormones, releases stored sugar, and keeps your brain alert. For a short time you may feel alert but uncomfortable, with bursts of focus mixed with irritability and hunger. But once glucose runs low, the strategy shifts. Fat becomes the main fuel, body temperature drops, movement slows, and energy is carefully rationed. That delayed shift is why food deprivation feels manageable at first, then suddenly draining, and why your metabolism only slows after it has already pushed you to survive. Over time, food deprivation quietly strains your system starting as subtle fatigue before deeper metabolic stress appears. Clinically, this shift involves falling insulin, rising cortisol, and changes in thyroid hormones that regulate metabolic rate. Think of it like a city shifting to emergency power, keeping hospitals lit while dimming everything else. You might feel colder, slower, mentally sharp one moment, then drained. In this video, we'll show when this happens, why it matters, and what the first days really reveal. When food deprivation begins, your metabolism doesn't panic, shut down, or throw a tantrum like the internet might suggest. It adapts, calmly and methodically. In the first several hours without food, your body simply switches fuel sources. Blood sugar drifts down slightly, insulin drops, and your liver releases stored glycogen to keep glucose levels steady. Think of glycogen as loose cash in your wallet. Not enough for a long vacation, but enough to get through the day. Human metabolism research shows liver glycogen can usually support basic energy needs for about 12 to 24 hours, depending on body size, muscle mass, and activity level. During this phase, hormones like glucagon and adrenaline rise just enough to keep you alert. That's why skipping meals feels uncomfortable, not dangerous. People describe hunger, irritability, stomach growling, and the sudden ability to smell food from across the room. Your metabolism isn't failing, it's problem solving. As glycogen stores begin to shrink, something unexpected happens. Instead of slowing down, your metabolism briefly pushes harder. Multiple studies in metabolic physiology have shown that resting energy expenditure often stays the same or even increases slightly during early food deprivation. Adrenaline and norepinephrine rise, heart rate nudges upward, and your brain stays switched on. From an evolutionary perspective, this makes perfect sense. If food disappears, staying energized improves your chances of finding it. In real life, people often report feeling wired, restless, or strangely productive during this stage. Sleep can become lighter. Hunger arrives in waves, then backs off. It's like your body saying, we're not done yet, keep moving. After roughly a full day without food, the metabolic strategy changes. With glycogen nearly gone, insulin remains low and fat breakdown accelerates. Fatty acids flood the bloodstream, and the liver starts converting some of them into ketone bodies. This process, known as ketosis, is not a modern diet trend invented by influencers. It's a built-in survival system. Research on prolonged fasting shows that within 24 to 48 hours, ketones can supply a large portion of the brain's energy, sometimes more than half. This shift often suppresses appetite, which surprises many people. Hunger fades not because your body stopped caring, but because the brain is now running on a different fuel. Some people feel mentally clear and focused, others feel foggy or sluggish. That difference comes down to metabolic flexibility, how easily your body switches fuels. Many also notice feeling colder because conserving heat saves energy. By the second and third day, your metabolism starts playing defense, Thyroid hormone T3, which helps regulate metabolic speed, begins to decline. Heart rate slows slightly. Body temperature drops a bit. Energy expenditure decreases. Cortisol rises to help maintain blood sugar, while growth hormone increases to protect muscle tissue. These changes have been observed repeatedly in clinical fasting trials and classic starvation research. This is not a metabolic crash. 
It's a controlled downshift, like dimming the lights in rooms you're not using so the main systems stay online. People often describe slower movement, lower motivation, and a heavy feeling in the body. This isn't laziness or weakness. It's efficiency. As food deprivation continues, the priorities narrow even further. Non-essential systems slow down. Reproductive hormones declined. Immune activity becomes less robust. Physical performance drops. At the cellular level, autophagy increases, allowing damaged proteins and worn-out cell components to be broken down and recycled. Research on autophagy has linked this process to cellular maintenance and stress resistance, which is why short-term fasting has attracted serious scientific interest. But here's the part that often gets left out. Autophagy is beneficial in moderation. Prolonged food deprivation eventually forces the body to break down muscle tissue to maintain blood glucose. Historical cases and medical observations show humans can survive weeks without food if hydration and minerals are maintained, but muscle loss accelerates once fat stores shrink. At that point, metabolism is no longer optimizing health. It's preventing collapse. This is where much of the confusion online comes from. Intermittent fasting and food deprivation are not the same metabolic signal. Intermittent fasting works because your metabolism knows food is coming back. Hormones remain relatively balanced, muscle is largely preserved, and metabolic flexibility improves. Food deprivation, where the timeline is uncertain, sends a very different message. Studies comparing structured fasting protocols with starvation models consistently show improved insulin sensitivity and metabolic markers with controlled fasting and rapid hormonal disruption with prolonged deprivation. The difference isn't discipline or mindset. It's biological context. The big takeaway is simple. Your metabolism is not fragile and it doesn't slow down the moment you skip a meal. It adapts in stages. First, it maintains performance and then it conserves energy. Finally, it prioritizes survival. Understanding this process explains why food deprivation can feel manageable at first, even empowering, before it suddenly feels draining. Your metabolism doesn't betray you. It pushes you as long as it can, then quietly pulls the brakes when survival becomes the priority. Food deprivation shows us something most people never realize. Your metabolism is not fragile, it's strategic. It doesn't slow down to punish you, it slows down to protect you. Understanding this shift gives you power. Power to stop fearing hunger and start respecting how your body manages energy. Short breaks from constant eating can improve metabolic flexibility, but pushing deprivation too far turns adaptation into damage. The goal isn't extremes, it's awareness. If you choose to change your eating habits, do it with intention, not punishment. Listen to the signals your body sends instead of fighting them. Health isn't about starving harder, it's about working smarter with your biology. If this helped you see metabolism differently, let us know in the comments. And if you want more science-backed insights that actually make sense, like, subscribe, and stay curious.